we've been on quite an adventure here in the US, which is quite a different environment to what we're used to. Coming over to this trip, I tried to moderate my expectations because I've been around long enough to know weather and life circumstances can interrupt the best laid plans of mice and men. But I did do some research on the Moab area and I was very, very excited about what I saw, the terrain, the tracks that can be driven and just the general beauty of the area. So it was quite excited to get out there and flex the legs on the little frontier behind me. So this is my second time to the US. My first trip, I was privileged enough to meet Shane, Cynthia and Courtney. And this time round was our trip to go on a road trip with our van. So my expectation was to show the US audience what I know our vans can do. Apart from that, I wasn't sure what Shane had in mind for us. So it was all a bit more of an excitement for me to, to think, well, I don't know where I'm going, but I know we can get there. I guess with any new adventure, it's important just to keep an open mind. It was something different for me and the team. It was going to be a very different landscape. How we use the RVs on this trip is it going to be similar to what we do in Australia? Is it going to be a little bit different because we're in the US? I really didn't have any sort of expectation or understanding of how this was all going to work. But what I did know is I was bringing over a fantastic crew. ROA has a fantastic crew. And when we put the two teams together, no matter what happens, it's just going to be a great adventure and no matter what we'd come across if there was going to be any obstacles or anything that we had to get together to overcome there'd be nothing we wouldn't be able to undertake <laughs> let's get going when we got down where the rendezvous point was sand hollow and we mm -hmm. met up with the whole crew yeah we just introduced ourselves we were hanging out and we come into this campground and there's side-by-sides and off-road vehicles and we're just thinking, oh, this is heaven. This is gonna be great. That is a kind of recreational facility that we don't have in Australia. There's very little to cater to organized off-roadings, particularly with off-highway vehicles, the buggies, the razors, etc. It's very hard to find places that aren't commercial operations run by individuals or companies so that was amazing the facilities there were fantastic the lake the campsites and seeing a bit of red sand and dirt outside of australia was exciting we generally have to drive a long way uh, towards the center of australia the deserts etc to see that the outlook of the snow-capped mountains was something that i've never been around before and once the team from the roa arrived cynthia bless her she cooked up this amazing dish Peruvian I believe which just grabbed everyone together we sat around the fire uh, we were hungry as and it was just a, an instant getting together with the team and meshing over that first meal on the first evening that I thought that was amazing and you know hats off to Shane and the team for making us feel so welcome because that was just the perfect start to our trip and then we hung out yeah. at the campfire learned that Steve is actually a comedian. I'm really struggling with the conversions. Which ones? The two hour <laughs> drive conversions. <laughs> we didn't realize oh. that. We were like... There were some pretty good jokes <laughs> going around. Yeah. It's, uh, just, it's just got more fun every single day, right? We've mm -hmm. gotten more comfortable and gotten to know everybody. I'd say this week, the things I've enjoyed most, other than the company, because the company is amazing, my colleagues from MDC are fantastic people and everyone from ROA. It's been absolutely superb. Great hospitality, lots of friendly banter and it feels very family. But the highlight was probably the drive, taking a stock Frontier, not known for its off-road capability with the Fort 9 and taking it up around one of the Jeep tracks and flexing and a bit of track building and a bit of tyre skidding. Yeah, so seven mile rim in some standard Nissan Frontiers towing caravans. What is this gonna be like? 
we've never done this trail with an actual manufacturer. Like we've done oh. it just as the team going up and there. And with our roamers. Yeah, we have taken some customers, some roamers up there. Yeah. Some of our most adventurous ones. Okay, Steve, I'm not 100% sure what we're gonna do. Ah, my first thought was Steve is not gonna make that. <laughs> there was one stage where we got to some rock steps and I took one look and I thought, no, I just don't, tires aren't big enough. The belly pan's not high enough off the ground. I said, no, nah, I'm not gonna drive that like that. I'm not gonna get up there. But never let impossibility stop you from having a go. And Steve proved us all wrong and proved himself wrong that he could do it. So seeing him get up there gave me a little bit more confidence. You know, us Australians, we're just happy to have a crack and we'll try anything. And that, you know, testament to Steve and what he did in that vehicle. And also Anya in our stock F-150, right? And I've just got the privilege of having a, a lifted F-150 that just made me look good. Just by picking good lines and being sensible, moving some rocks when you have to and ramping up to get up bigger steps, you'd be very surprised how far you can take a stock vehicle. It just takes a bit of common sense and a bit of forethought. Stop, get out, have a look and then work out how you're going to do it. So don't be scared, have a bit of a go, but always have a recovery plan. So other people with you to get you out of trouble. I know the vans are capable. It's just getting that message out to the US audience that they are capable. Obviously we do different in Australia to the US, but capability wise, they're up there. But I think giving yourself that confidence that you can go anywhere you want I mean we're sitting where we are now it's like on a different planet but you look out and you see snow-capped mountains so teaching yourself that you can push yourself and wherever your vehicles can go you can take these vans with you taking them to actual manufacturer has really been fun yeah I think that's yeah. really cool I believe like manufacturers people that actually use the product it's just a different experience overall when yeah. you they right? can stand more behind their product right they can see what they can do and then they can make it better or see like okay this is what's going on they're willing just to put their product out there and, and yeah. stand behind it one thing i've learned is you really need to try and understand the market that you're trying to put a product into because what we do in Australia is a little bit different to what you do in the US. And a lot of that is around weather and winterization. So in Australia, we don't have a four seasons kit. And in the US, the temperatures quite often, people are going out and camping in the middle of winter and it's snowing. We just don't do that in Australia. And so what I've learned is you need to partner up with passionate people and passionate companies that really understand the product that they're selling to their customers. It's really cool about MDC is you can tell Vaughn, well, he's been camping in the camper the whole time here. You can tell he goes out, uses them, knows the customers. He says he must know hundreds or a thousand names of the MDC owners. You look at the guys from ROA, they're all campers, they're all caravanners, they're actually out here doing it. You have a look at their YouTube videos. They actually live the lifestyle. You talk to Shane, the owner, and he was a camper from way back. I think it's amazing that he gets to live his passion and he gets to live his passion through his team and creating such a great company. I think everybody loved the adventure. I feel like it's been a success, right? It's been great. I mean, ultimately you can travel and do a lot of tourism and go through like the classic spots, but I love that we've been doing this with these campers, you know, like, or RVs, but it just takes you to places like where we're at now, Swinger City, where no tour guide's gonna bring you here and camp through the night. I mean, these are the things that you just do when you have RVs that are able to like handle this weather and these type of places. So. I'm glad that we've been able to show the Australians this type of scenery. And all in the comfort of your warm caravan. Subscribe now. The adventure starts next week.